Aloha, and welcome to this episode of the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. My name is Gwendolyn Harris. My guest today is an international jazz vocalist and songwriter who was born and raised in the Philippines and discovered her musical gift and the joy of entertaining at a young age. After completing her bachelor's degree in Manila, she went on to chase her dreams of performing and performed in Japan, Hong Kong, Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, and Guam. Now, this amazing vocalist lives here in the United States and has performed with some of the best in smooth jazz music. Her current tune, the remake of the group Players Tune, Baby Come Back, which features five-time Grammy Award-winning guitarist Mills, is climbing the chart. I am happy to have her here today on the show. Let's welcome Miss Heidi Tim to the show. Aloha, Heidi. How are you? Aloha. Hi to everybody. Hi. And nice to finally meet you and yes. all the listeners. Yes. yes. You know, I always see you on Facebook. That's how we met on Facebook. That's how I meet a lot of artists on Facebook and just by going to concert. But we're going to get this, this, this train rolling, this smooth dash train rolling, like I like to say. And you started music at a young age. How or who or what inspired you to get into the music industry? Um, no, that's just way, way back. When I was five years old, I was actually, um, I grew up in my grandma's house and my aunt were playing piano. We have piano lessons every day. I grew up in a musical family. My mom sings. My uncle's one of uh, the kind of famous piano player in the Philippines. And I listened to a lot of um, old classic jazz music when I was five, six years, six years old. And I find myself listening to uh, Frank Sinatra, Sarah Vaughan, Nancy Wilson, and um, Sergio Mendes, Natalie Cole. You name it, we have all kinds of music. And I find myself singing um, like more into the jazz side instead of like pop. And no, I don't really like pop when I was young. I was like doing stylistics, Natalie Cole, Barbara Streisand. I mean, um, yeah, name it, all jazz, like, yeah, um, Nancy Wilson and, and Sarah Vaughan, Ella Fitzgerald. Oh, that's nice. I grew up listening to Ella Fitzgerald, Sarah Vaughan. My mother, we go to concerts for Ella Fitzgerald, Sarah Vaughan. So I know exactly, you know, what you were, what you're talking about. Now, you, you, you got your degree in Manila. What was your major? I was, um, I did the Bachelor's of Science in Business Administration and I majored finance and marketing in the Philippines. So, yeah. So I couldn't, I couldn't really get the, to singing seriously because my mom said, well, you can do whatever you want as long as you finish your school. So I had to finish my school while I'm, you know, kind of singing on the side when I was in college, when I was in the university that time. So you're a hardworking woman. You did a great, you did a great major. I'm majoring right now in, in business music um, for my second bachelor. So, and I oh my God, it. really? And That's amazing. That I'm so envious. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to take up a uh, communication arts in music and piano, but my mom said, no, there's no money in music. You can't put the uh, food in the table with music. So I had to take the business course. So, you know, I mean, I don't want to be a nurse, so I can't handle it. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure the business aspect helps you with your career because you can do your own stuff, do your own business. Yeah, I mean, I, I know it helps that you, you have the business savvy because not, not only that you have the artistic side, but you also have the business side. So you know the, be the best of both, both worlds, right? Right. You have toured and performed all over Asia. Are there any differences between, I guess, touring and performing overseas versus touring and performing here in the United States? Um, it's not really different because what I see is it's different people that you're seeing because in Asia, because I sing in hotels and clubs. So most of the people, it's a tourist spot. So you're gonna be you're gonna be meeting a lot of ethnicity, like people staying from Europe, from other countries, and they're the one going to hotels and watch you, or mm -hmm. either you meet locals, or probably it's just a mix of both. I mean, I feel like uh, there's really not a lot of difference, but it's just more relaxing because it's a nightly gig. So you sing like um, standard songs, chill, or you sing party songs. 
depends on where, where am I actually booked in, in a club or a, it's like a, a jazz place. So it just changes the ambience depending on what music you're playing and what type of band, you know, what type of genre you're playing. But I feel like it's just more relaxed. I mean, it depends on the audience. They don't want you to sing loud music. But if you're going to be a performing clubs, you're going to be doing like party songs. So it just varies. I can't say that it's just, it's just different de de depending on the venue that you're uh, performing. Gotcha. Yeah. Now, you play the piano. You said you were taking piano lessons, correct? Growing up? Not really taking piano, but it's just, I self-learned it. Yeah, you I didn't go to school, but I kind of know how to read a little bit of notes, but I read, um, I can read charts, a little bit of chords, but it's just important for you to be able to, uh, to know music because so you can hear yourself right right so exactly your key when you have problems with key with with the band this is my key that's not my key i'm like a flat i'm g so it's kind of give you like more respect oh she knows her key <laughs> she knows what she's doing <laughs> she knows her you can pull this lady because one time i had an experience like i don't think that's my key i think it's just a little higher and you no no it's not F it's G I know I know I I know my key so <laughs> they can't argue with you. <laughs> you um you are an amazing vocalist, but there is a lot of vocalists out there. I I always I ask this of every artist that I interview. What sets you apart from the other vocalists out there on the scene? I don't think though it's just what sets. I think I'm just being authentic. I mean, being an artist, it's not even, you're not trying to compete with other artists. You're just being yourself. And by being yourself, then you get people to be drawn into you because you're trying to be yourself. You're expressing yourself. I think authenticity is the key to being a good artist and being able to feel the song that you're trying to deliver the message. It's like singing is communicating with people. So if you know how to communicate through singing, then you're effective, right? Yes. Yes. I agree with that wholeheartedly. You're a music major, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, you, you, you sung and you still sing. You probably don't like it. But you sing pop, R&B, um, Latin jazz, right? Yeah. Uh, what was it? Was it uh, Bossa Nova? Bossa Nova, yeah. And you sing regular jazz. What yeah. is your favorite genre? And I think I know what you're going to say, but what is your favorite genre to sing? I think it's really jazz and R&B and soul for the most, because it, it actually suits my voice. Uh -huh. And I kind of relate to the song too. I mean, I can sing pop anytime in a heartbeat. But right. my favorite are the R&B, jazz, and soul. I mean, I'm a little bit of a, like a Nancy Wilson, Anita Baker, Tony Braxton, so mm -hmm. Vanessa Williams. So you can mix them all, and that's going to be Patty Austin. And I grew up listening to Patty Austin, too, in the Philippines. So she's one of my idols, so, because she can sing. If you know Patty Austin, she can sing jazz, pop, R&B, and soul, right? Yes. So that's her. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. You have already collaborated with some of the best artists, right? Who would be your dream collaboration? There's just tons of them. I mean, I don't want to name so many names because because there might there might come back to me tomorrow. Heidi, why did you just say you did not mention my name? <laughs> but you know, you put it. I always say this: you put it into existence. You never know. It, it'll happen. I have a lot, but I would love to do a duet with Bruno Mars one day because he's also oh. Filipino. <laughs> oh, oh. Right? That would that be, would a be an interesting, uh, uh, inter uh, interesting combination. I would love to see that too. Yeah, because he's also Filipino. His mother is Filipino, so it's like mixed, just like me. I'm like Spanish. I'm actually a mix of Spanish, Chinese, and Filipino, so the same 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 uh, mix okay all right now i want you to tell us about the awesome collaboration that you did with Nils, oh, which is God. the remake of the song baby come back to me now if you or baby come baby come back 
If you have not heard it to my viewers, you need to go ahead on YouTube and listen to it. I absolutely love it. The combination of Heidi's voice and Nils, the guitarist, amazing. Amazing. How did that collaboration come about, Heidi? Well, you know, the Baby Come Back, there was a backstory on that song. That song was actually arranged by Bobby Gomez from the Philippines. And it was supposed to be planning to do that for parties. Like, you know, I want to make, you know, customize my tracks to sing for parties. I want to do Baby Come Back. Can we do that for parties? Can you just make me a minus one, a track? And then and then after he made it, he said, Heidi, why, do, why don't you release it? I mean, this is nice. I mean, well, let's see. I'll think about it. I mean, and it's sad. So it was, I had it since 2021. Can you believe that? I never released it. And wow. then he was nagging me. Well, you need to release it. It's 2023 now, Heidi. And I met Nils last year. We we met in on a show in Vegas. And then after that, we became friends. And I invited him to do to join my show last year at the PCH Club in Long Beach, California. And then I told him, Nils, I have a song, you know, Baby Come Back. You know, you know that by player. And um, do you want to uh, be a part of it, like guest, like a guest gu guitar player? And he said, I will listen to it, Heidi, first, and I'll see if, you know, if I like the vibe. You know, because I don't really do a lot of vocals, but if I like it, um, I'll let you know. And then I sent it to him. He was on tour at the time. I'll give you a couple of days, and I'll let you know. And then after a few days, he said, oh, oh my gosh, I did love the song. I would love to be a part of the song. I got so excited. And I got yeah. Pete Tokar. Pete Tokar, sound engineer. He's a Grammy uh, sound engineer. He has worked for R. Kelly, Anita Bigger, all those big artists. And I asked him to, to mix the song. So imagine I have two Grammy people working. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's just a marriage in heaven. So <laughs> it's an amazing song. I absolutely love it. I think it was a couple of weeks ago. I just had it like on replay. For real, <laughs> for real I had that on replay. And Nils will actually be here in Hawaii next month. Oh, he is? Yeah, at Blue Note. So he should come back. So you can I should come back, yeah. <laughs> you can tell him. I mean, I'm, I'm, we might do a show in Atlanta. I mean, we're planning something. And I'm actually coordinating with people in UK to do probably a show in UK, if not this year, next year. Because my fans, if you know, I have a lot of uh, fans in Europe as well. So. Yeah. My song in the is in his UK soul charts and it's been on smooth jazz charts. This is the first time that my song has crossed over in in pop, soul, and RB and smooth jazz. And it's just amazing. I never realized that I'm just, you know, taking that song for granted since 2021, right? <laughs> and it's still climbing. Has the original um the original uh, people of the Greek player, have they contacted you or anything? No, they haven't. They might be. <laughs> You'll never know. <laughs> I have a vinyl of that. Um, I had a vinyl of copy of that song from the player, but yeah, but they're probably happy because I'm kind of reviving the song that, you know, the, that was a billboard, number one billboard chart on the billboard charts, 1978, right? Yes. Yes. And I so remember that telling my age but anyway <laughs> <laughs> i researched it i didn't even know when i had the song made yeah. i never even knew that it was on billboard charts i did did you know that baby come back i had no idea i just loved the song i mean i just wanted because you know lisa stansville did up her own version but yes. there's more like a, a pop but mine is like smooth jazz and uh, yep. and soul so i mean and people said, I mean, I think we like this version even compared to original. Are you serious? <laughs> I do. I like it. I really like it. I yeah. really like it. <laughs> well, um, what? <laughs> now, I read in your in your bio um, that you have a daughter. Mm -hmm. And I, I, a reason why I'm bringing this up, because the music industry is, are, is already a hard industry, you know, to, to get into. But you have a daughter and you raised her as a single parent while in the industry. I want you to, and I know that had to be some challenges with that. I, I already know. I want you to um, just give us a, you know, how was that for you? Oh, um, 
it was tough because um you're gonna actually feed your child with just music and it's not easy and I was just a full-time musician that time in the Philippines but also I do a lot of business on the side I had the salon that we we own in the Philippines at the same time I, I'm traveling and I'm singing on the side it wasn't so hard because I have a lot of gig that time and I also travel like maybe a week to go to Hong Kong for a function and then I would sing um for like a, a month and and come back to but I just can't travel so much I mean I mean I can only travel for like two months or one month or just a few weeks to sing but I was able to manage it until I moved to United States and I I, I brought her with me yeah now she now is she in the music industry at all does she like music now she she's doing DJ and she's singing oh she, she's doing she's just started to go back to music because she was she actually went to United uh, University of Southern California and she became a summa cum laude for uh yeah journalism and mass uh, communication arts so I was really proud of my daughter and I thought and then suddenly now she's kind of doing it uh, for fun like doing DJ, she's uh -huh. a DJ and singing on the side you know and I'm trying to just mentor her if you want to do singing because it's 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 something that you know she stopped it she plays guitar but now she likes I think it's me because she's singing she's seeing me that I'm going back to music and and now it's even recording not even just performing but releasing uh songs original songs and performing for and then my song is getting a uh, stream by um, a lot of people I mean internationally it was played on on a lot of uh countries right now right well that's awesome that's awesome now would you be able to give us just a little bit of sampling you know just a little something something you know for the viewer sure I mean well by, by the way my first album was uh produced by Rex Salas if you know Right Stuff by Vanessa Williams yes yeah, he was the one who produced my first album. Here is where we meet. That's Rex. So he brought me to the recording industry. That guy is the one who did. If you heard my song "Missing You," mm -hmm. so yeah, that was my first album. It was Rex Salas. I just want to give credit to him. So he was the one who helped me, you know, get jump into the recording industry. So what song do you want me to sing? Do you want me whatever to sing? you want to sing? Maybe whatever. come back because that's a famous one right now whatever you want to sing okay, I can sing a few lines of the song I mean yeah. okay so maybe like 10 12 seconds right yeah okay so um um spending all my nights all my money going out of the town doing anything just to get you off of my mind when the morning comes I'm right back where I started again try and forget you it's just a waste of time baby come back <laughs> you see you got okay that was just perfect so now you have to go listen to the album <laughs> that was just a little yeah. for you viewers to go ahead and listen to that album and all of her music all of it now what do you have um well before i ask you this question what advice would you give a new artist coming into the industry? Oh, uh, it's it's going to be, um, you have to prepare yourself to be, uh, to, you know, take your sleeves off and, you know, work. I mean, music does not come in silver platter. So you have to learn how to um, collaborate with good musicians. You have to know how to network. You have to prepare yourself for branding. You, have, you need your own website you need your press kit it's a lot of uh, marketing and publishing and networking and being able to connect with a lot of people your networking skills and uh, your outsourcing resourceful uh, ability will take you in a lot of place so it helps to be really a people person I mean if you're a people person you have no problem talking to people you have no problem getting rejected it's okay you know I'll move on you know it's not for me I mean it's just it's like sales I mean music is in sales are kind of connected because yeah. it's just being able to bring your product your brand to people right it's yeah. the same, um it's the same aspect process yeah every week I out there and that is talented too. <laughs> you need to be talented too you can't just sing it <laughs> you know it's because you can't market but you don't have the voice for it right <laughs> 
<laughs> so what what new projects do you have coming up, if any? And what shows should we be marking on our calendar? Yeah, we're trying to work on some. Yeah, um, we're trying to work on a, a show in San Diego and probably local. And I'm talking to my booking agent and I might do an L.A. show, too. And I'm talking to another booking agent in D.C. So mm -hmm. I might perform in D.C. this year. So, yeah, pretty much. And then I might just go to Europe this year. I don't know, because I'm meeting one of my record producer um, in uh, in Italy and Netherlands. So because I might release another um, I mean, um, another song. I, I can't tell you it's a surprise, but I'm going to keep this producer. in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there's more to come. I mean, Heidi Tan ain't giving up music. I guess I can't leave the, the music industry because it just keeps going and going right now. Yeah. Oh, something new, right? It just won't stop. I thought after the first album, that, that'll be it. And I, I don't even know. A single radio can play my song before I, I won't even eat my lunch anymore. <laughs> I remember like some a station played my song and I can't even eat. Don't talk to me. Uh, they're going to play my song. <laughs> I can't eat. I'm so excited. <laughs> I remember those days. <laughs> when people go um, to find your music, to check out your schedule and if they just want to find out more about you Heidi Tan yeah people can subscribe to my website at HeidiTanMusic.com and pretty much if you want to google me you can google Heidi Tan Music and you can find everything on my website and I, I try to update my website as much as I can but they can follow me on Instagram at Heidi Tan Music um, and Heidi Tan Official so on Instagram, they can uh, they can actually see what's going on with my with my activity. If I'm doing shows and if I'm recording, um, and by the way, I'm I'm releasing another remix of Baby Come Back. It's coming by for by by July Fourth of July. The remix of the club mix of Baby Come Back is coming. Oh, not the club mix. Yeah, it's a club remix coming. Oh wow. Out. Yeah. Okay. I'm, well, you know, unfortunately, Heidi, our time has come to an end, and I told you this was going to be so quick. So yeah. that just means that eventually I'm going to have to bring it back. Well, I have some shirt for you when I, in, in Hawaii when I see you. It's a Heidi Tan, Heidi Tan shirt. Oh, okay. So people can buy a shirt on your website. Yeah, too. they can buy a shirt on my website. Uh, and then in the Vanity Magazine, which I was speaker, there's a cover. I'll bring it, I'll bring it to you so you can, uh, you know, I'll sign it. It's my gift to you. <laughs> oh, thank you, Miss Heidi. I really <laughs> appreciate you. To my viewers, first of all, Heidi, thank you so much for, for being on my show. I really do appreciate it. I wanted the viewers to learn more about you. We're going to bring you back for a part two, okay? Sure. What else is going on, you know, with Heidi Tan. Um, but I will see you this week. And to, awesome. and to okay. my viewers. Thank and you. I'm excited to see you. Yes. 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 Take care, Hobbs. And, and um, I'll see you guys in Hawaii. Yes, you will. To my viewers, thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time, aloha and God bless. Thank you so much for watching ThinkTech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.